It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the most kosher way, okay? Okay, Amy's got to come with the photocopies, okay? So in the meantime, we're going to... We are now going to begin the next part of the book, which is called The Ins and Outs of Friends and Enemies. And that actually, it starts on page 143, okay? 143. And if this is the bomb of probably the entire book. Okay. Okay, one second. Oh, what happened here? Good. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, so we're going to be starting You Are What You Hate on page 143, The Ins and Outs of Friends and Enemies. And the reason why this is such a bomb was because um, it alters your thinking. It alters your view of your reality, which is what we're all working towards. We want to see things differently. We want to get the aha, right? Yes. We seriously want to get to the aha, Okay. So, the issue is, let me just, one second, I need to do something here. We're back online. I need it again online because otherwise, whatever. Okay. This is it. From the Kamarna Rebbe. Rebbe Yaakov, uh, Latoldos Yaakov Yosef, got it from the Baal Shem Tov. Okay? So, here it is. I heard from my teacher... Shemati Mimori, that means I heard it from the Baal Shem Tov, that the nefesh, ruach, and neshama of a person incarnate into the seven lower sirot from chesed to malchut. Let me explain. Stop. First of all, you got to know that we have five levels of soul, right? There's the lowest, medium, higher. They are anchored. The first three are anchored through our body. And then there's two other ones which are called peripheral or makifim, and they're way beyond. They don't have a, they're so beyond that, so sublime that they can't be anchored through a body. Let's say you have your liver and your blood, that's the nefesh. That's the life, the basic life force. Everything has a nefesh. Animals have a nefesh. That's the lowest level of life force, okay, called nefesh. And then you have just above from that, it's called ruach, which is an emotional. Okay, and that is anchored in the heart, and then you'll have the neshama, which is the mind. Okay, the neshama, which is the mind, is anchored in the is anchored in the brain. Okay, and then you'll have two higher ones, which are called chaya and yechida. But in any case, here he says the nefesh ruach and neshama of a person incarnate into the seven lower sfirot. We are not going to get into that from Chesed into Malchut, but this is not the, the essence of the Sefer because there was no commentary actually in the source material for how these are, but we won't go into that. Right now, what he says is like this. The Nefesh, which is the lower part of your soul, extends its light in the mystery of a person's servants, employees, animals, and physical possessions. Okay? That means... Every, yeah, you have a dog still? You, you know, dog, no, not anymore. You're getting a new dog? You have a dog, right? So, servants, employees, right? Employees? You have employees? No employees? Huh? Physical possessions, you have physical possessions. <laughs> no, I don't have one. I don't have a dime. Not a dime. I have this shirt. It's not my shirt. <laughs> I got six dollars in These glasses are not my glasses. Okay? Granted. Physical possessions are an extension of your nephesh, your very soul. Okay? In other words, you think your soul is all contained in your body and really sight in a little matchbox and you just be a good boy, right? But it's not that way at all. Okay? So your lower level of soul extends into those parts of your immediate environment, okay? The surroundings that you connect with of servants, employees, animals, and physical possessions, okay? They're part of your nefesh. And we'll get to, what does that do for me, Rabbi? So what, right? His ruach, that's the next part of the soul, extends itself into his spouse, and friends, and enemies, which is really the focus of this book. Okay? His neshama extends itself into his progeny. 
Okay, in other words, your neshama is your children. Okay, so now I'm bringing from the Toldos Yaakov Yosef, who was one of the great students of the, the Baal Shem Tov, that he brings in Parshish Lech Lecha, because they didn't give you, she didn't give you the whole, the rest of the story, okay? Because really we have to figure out what is it pertinent to us. I mean, it's really bizarre that all of those things are really part of my soul, right? All that stuff I'm going on out there, different parts of my soul, okay? So he says like this, are you ready for this? Okay, buckle your seatbelts, Dorothy, okay? The im pagam benefesh, if a person blemished his nefesh, his lower part of his soul, the hainu that's with a deed. He, is, he did a deed which was not proper, okay? Not in alignment with Torah values. Goreim lo tsar mi avadav osav. So then it causes for him, for the person, pain, troubles, you ever heard of the word troubles before? <laughs> From his servants and his animals, and probably his possessions, and everything like that. In other words, if a person has problems with his servants, employees, animals, or possessions, right? Like some of my possessions actually have legs on them, and they crawl and they hide in places where I can't find them, like car keys. <laughs> Or other things, my wife's cell phone is a living entity on its own that plays hide and go seek as soon as I get in the house. She's trying to leave the house. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? It's a living entity that knows how to hide. That's the one of the many smart things that it does, smartphones, okay? And, it, and then the charger. Those are living things on its own also. The chargers always disappear. So if a person has troubles... Issues with those things, it means that a person has a blemish in that nefesh, in his nefesh. Okay? Psh, what a thing to contemplate. That's a pretty heavy thing. Now, this is not, now, I have to always, I have to always iterate this. This is, <laughs> you're going to leave this, and you see somebody with car trouble, you better check out your nefesh, buddy. This is not for you to point fingers. Okay? <laughs> Right? Or a person has Anna, you know, oh, my animal, my Fifi, she is so sick all the time. I have to take her to the vet almost once a week for this shot, for this or this. You have a problem with your nefesh. You better check yourself out. Right? And then you know something? I'll even tell you what it is. Usually we're really good with that. Right? <laughs> you didn't buy me pizza the other day. Right? You didn't offer me some pizza or something. At the restaurant? That's right. Okay. So in any case, this is for a person's own self-evaluation. Okay? Never point the finger at anybody. We don't know the real cause why things are, but this is now a real heavy nugget for us, right? To explore if the situation should arise, God forbid, right? <laughs> that we should have a problem that we're, our, our workers are embezzling or, uh, or anything like that. Things break down in your house. I don't know what's going on, Rabbi. First the TV goes and the computer goes and then, you know? Baharuach. Now, what about the spirit? We said the spirit, basically, who is an extension of our spirit? The spirit is our spouse. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> friends and enemies. Oh, your friends, they're just there. They are your very spirit. They're your ruach, right? If they're friends. Okay. <laughs> David, you have any friends? <laughs> David, you got any friends? I got a lot of ruach, baby. I got a lot of friends. Okay? But ruach malahu adibor. So the ruach, of course, is related to the dibor, which is related to speech. So we have actions, and now we are in the speech level, because ruach, the second level of your neshama, relates to speech. So now, if a person blemishes his speech with lashon hara, gossip, speaking derogatory about things even, People for sure, or even things. Okay? He's got, then what happens? If he blemishes with his speech, Lush and Hara, or anything like that, so then it's made from this Debor people that will cause him pain and they will speak against him. In other words, some people said, I heard a rumor about you. Yes. And whatever, they'll say some kind of rumor, or people will start speaking bad. It happened to me last week. Happened to me last week. 
I wrote a little a blog and I put it, posted a blog and all of a sudden I got in a conversation with somebody about my blog that some people, you know, thought I was a call, a call, called me a renegade or something like that. Rogue, rogue rabbi, renegade. And no, 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 don't worry about it. It's taken care of. I took care of it. Yeah, for me, yeah. Anyways, it, it was okay, actually. I took it as a compliment, but and, and I corrected it. It's why we're in this room. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so they, I, the issue was that if a person has suffers, either his spouse has given them a headache, and that never happened, right? <laughs> nah. Not for men or women. Nah, never. Right? All of a sudden, you just... You know, sometimes the relationship gets a little rocky, okay? It's called, well, for me, I can say it's the nagging wife, okay? For, I don't know what, I guess the women would say it's stupid husband. Okay. <laughs> it's always nagging wife versus dumb husband, okay? <laughs> right, mindless, whatever, lazy, maybe, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to go there because I'm like seven is seven days of the week. That's really nice. Okay, let's stick with Shabbos. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so if a person has a blemish with his with his with his mouth, okay, right? So because mouth, he calls it actually zivug. It's kind of a way that people do connect with each other. So it means a blemish in a connection. So therefore, he'll have a problem with his connections, meaning his his, his friends. His, right? His friends or spouse, right? Or enemies. He'll have people who will actually speak gossip about him, lush and horror about him, right? It ha and, it, and, it, and it happens. And it's just like, when it happens, it's like really kind of shocking all of a sudden that people start a rumor, let's say, about my wife that she, you know, <coughs> you know whatever, doesn't like these kind of people. And it, and, it, and it wasn't true at all. And it was shocking, but it happened, Okay. It happened, but it was okay. It got it got taken care of, but it's just that such a thing could happen. That such a rumor can spread. Unbelievable. That's because, therefore, it is a reflection that a person needs to fix their speech. We have to be careful with what we say all the time. It says no day goes by without a, that a person does not stumble to what's called avak lashon hara. Avak lashon hara means the dust. Of Lashon Hara. Dust. What is the dust of Lashon Hara? That means you even say things that can be construed in two different ways, positive or negative. Mm -hmm. The biggest example that the Chavetz Chaim brings in his book, uh, Guard Your Tongue. It's a great book. Everybody has to own that. Okay? Guard Your Tongue, Chavetz Chaim. They have it in English. It's been around a long time. Is that a guy comes and he says, you know, I, is there a place that has food around? Right? Somebody comes and asks me. I'm looking for a place for, for, for some, somebody who's got some food around. Right? I'm, let's say we didn't have Dino's or Echves, all these places. Right? Mm -hmm. they want to, and, I, and I say, go to Joe. He's always got, a, 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 he's always got his, his oven is always stoking. He's always got his chimney's always burning. Right? In those days. Right? <laughs> Whatever you call it. He's always, stove is all, he's, he's always got food blazing. So that means he's. I can be construed two different ways. He's a he's a you know a gluttonous guy. He's always stuffing his face, hey, or he's always having guests, right? And all I, he's always got something in his oven. He's always got he always got a pot on his stove, right? So it could be well. I'm not saying it very well. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not saying it very well. You know, if I just say, you know, if I go to Joe, he always has a flame, right? So, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm see, even my words, I'm tripping up very much, even on my own words here. Thank God there's nobody named Joe in town. Okay, what? It's avak. It's called dust of Lashon Hor because I can construe it of, dude, the guy's like always fressin. Fressin means I'm always eating. He's always, he's always got food. You know, what, what does that mean? So that, uh, somebody could, not you, but somebody could construe it as the dude's a, a real porker. That's your problem. Yeah, but I understand. Mm -hmm. I am not. Don't want to he say something to that even has the possibility. The, the best thing, 
The so best. What do you do? Nothing. What? No. What you just go say Joe's house has guests all the time. Oh, okay. okay. Instead of he always got a he always got something yeah, on the pot. It's, it's almost like sarcasm. It's like, it's no, like, it, it's it's a very parv language. I said, yeah. but I said it in a way that you can actually have two. The, it, 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 no, no, I'm saying it. I'm not saying it in a good way. I'm sorry. Yes, are, no, I'm not. I'm saying it like the guy is merely a big fresser. So I. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I got fired, right? But if you say it just in a, like a simple way, he's always got something on the fire. Well, let's say I come up to you and I say, I know somebody, and I can make. Well, can you tell me about him? And you say, Well, it's up to you to make your own decision. Well, can't that be construed either way? Not that. Is also avat bleshenor because why do I have to say that? <laughs> well, you're just gonna make your own decision. Well, and I go. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Tell him he's a, he's a jerk. I mean, not no, God forbid. No, no. I'm not gonna get into the laws of bleshenor and the intricacies. Yeah. All I'm just saying is, avat bleshenor. It's very hard for a person to be saved from every day because words can be construed in different ways that we express, and requires a lot of consciousness in terms of when we speak. And it requires thought. And all of the Rishonim, the earlier rabbis, I'm telling you, they would think things through left, right, up, down, center. Before they even say anything, they counted their words like gold, man. They would not, not like we do today, we just sprawl out things like <laughs> a verbal diarrhea, right? We don't even know what's came out, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, how long? If that can only be, and a person would even contemplate that. It happened to me the other day. I caught myself. I said, I can't believe I told this person that. That was wrong. And I regretted it. Okay? You have to be careful with your words. The problem is here, if a person has an issue with his wife, or, uh, or friends, or he has enemies speaking bad about him, dissenters, okay? That means the person has a blemish in their speech. Now let's get to the other one which is everybody could probably raise their hand, okay? <laughs> yes, because we know, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Right? The wife is supposed to be, you know, they say, this is how it works here. Just simply, let's just stick with the ruach, which is the wind or the spirit, level two of the soul, right? A person's wife is his ruach. It's his, it's his, it's his soul. So therefore, we say in the Gomorrah, it brings down in the, in the Talmud in Masechet Yevamot, See, the language when, they, when God made Eve for Adam, right? She says she, she's going to be a Azer Konegdo. Azer Konegdo really kind of like is, um, an oxymoron in a certain way. Azer means help. Konegdo is against him. Help against him? What, they don't go together. Help, just stick with the help part. What do you need the Konegdo part? A Konegdo means against him. Why? Be a helper. Against him? That means if the man is meritorious, she helps. Okay? If the man is Zoche, if he's on a level, spiritual level, he's on a good path. But if he's not Zoche, she's against him and she gives it to him because she straightened him out. That's why God created her to straighten him out when he gets off target. Right? Thank God. Right? See, that's why... I'm telling you, Rashi, simple understanding of the text. Why did God make Eve? Because he was alone. Dude, he would not, he would be think he'd be king of the world and he would never get any musser from any, from anybody. So we gotta get some musser action in here. We create the wife and there would be constant musser. Okay? It's like I got the musser app that's always like, you blow it again. What'd you do? So I can tell my husband about that? About what? <laughs> Why I was put on this earth? To give you musser. <laughs> to give him, right? Absolutely. Okay. okay. You know where to tell him it came from. <laughs> you didn't make it up. It came from other. This is from the Torah, man. This is the Torah relationship. He's not the only rabbi. If you, if he's on the level, she's she helps him, man. If he's like, if his, if his, whatever his job is, you know, if he's making shoes, she'll go ahead and make the threads for the shoes. You know, or if she's a lawyer, she'll, you know, if she can do that, she'll always support the husband if he's on the level, right? If he's not, if he's, you know, a fumble butt, so then she's going to knock him on the head. Go make a decent pair of shoes, you bum. Okay? Or whatever it is. Okay? Get a job. Go do something. Make your life. Okay? 
she create God created Eve to humble man. Okay? If he's on the right path, she doesn't he doesn't need that humbling, right? She's an azer, she's a help. If not, you got Kinegdo. I mean you got Darth Vader in your own house. The woman Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, ladies. It's not that you. So I'm a man, so. <laughs> okay, whatever. We have a married couple sitting in here, remember? I know, that's what makes it even more fun. Okay, next level. Shh. Shh. Okay. The neshama. The neshama, we say, is the, re- the highest, the higher part of our soul, called the neshama, level three. Of course, it's anchored through the brain. Okay, so shemizena said tipa zarit, and this, according to all the kabbalistic texts, is where actually for the man, where the drop of seed comes from, that creates the child. Okay, they haven't been able to make that connection in science yet, but according to all of the most deepest kabbalistic texts, it's a given that all that the seed comes from the brain. Okay, so so therefore, and it, therefore, if a person blemishes his thoughts in his mind, it causes that there should be to him pain from his children. Okay? In other words, if a guy has a problem with his kids, and it could be a whole spectrum of issues, anything, that means something in the brain needs to be clean, uh, fixed. Okay? Cleansed, fixed. There's a tikkun in the mind. A person's is not getting 100% nachas from his kid. And I know you're all getting 100% nachas from all your kids, right? Always. All of them, right? Everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's right, 100%. Excuse me. Okay, so if you're getting 100% nachas from all your kids, right? So then you're good, but of course... It's <laughs> it's challenge. So therefore, what it is, it's a reflection to us that something in our neshama, because they are an extension of our neshama. The kids are an extension of our neshama. It was asked to me about parents now. And I don't have a real answer. In other words, if your parents are around and you got problems with your parents, right? Where is that? Is that nefesh? Is that ruach? Is that neshama? Is it Chaya? Is it, the, like, is it the peripheral? What is it? But really, in a certain sense, we are the neshama of the parents. Right? Mm-hmm. So it could be that um, since we're the neshama of the parents, an extension of their neshama, so then maybe you would say, just to throw it out there, it would also be a reflection of a person's thoughts. If a person has you know, challenges from the parents. Okay? Could be also something. It could be. I'm, I don't know. It, it's it, not in any text that I've read. I'd like to see it. But you must be that thirty-year-old guy that went to court because the parents kicked him out of the house, and he wouldn't go. He but wouldn't go out of the house. He wouldn't leave the house, so they had to go to court, and the judge, oh, right. judge, just yesterday this happened, ordered so him out of the house. Ordered him out Evicted. because yeah. he's still not. Yeah. Evicted. They have to like get a policeman to lift him up. Yeah. Okay. He's like, well, I'm not ready. Okay, let's not go there. See, the interesting thing is, though, just to backtrack here, we, we have that happened in the Garden of Eden. I was, I was looking at this last night. It was an interesting thing that in the Garden of Eden that, um, you know, Hava, Eve, was uh, basically met or basically she was dished out to the consequence of eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that, that, that there'll be pain at childbirth, and then there'll be what's called sar gidl banim, the pain of raising children. So really, this comes from way the Garden of Eden. In other words, the idea really is that this idea of fixing the thoughts, it's really the same exile that we're in today. In other words, we are in the... The uh, the Arizal did bring down, like, the exile of Egypt is the paradigm of all exiles. Okay? The one we see in the Chumash the whole going down there, being there for 210 years, coming out, right? All of that is a paradigm for all exiles. And the exile of Egypt is known, and it is called the exile of the mind, according to the Ari. In other words, the, the limited consciousness, 
everything about it is that limitation. And the idea of getting out of Egypt, right, is freeing the mind and getting the more expanded consciousness. So the idea really, the beginning of that exile really did start in the Garden of Eden. Because in the Garden of Eden, as we know, because that Eve got dished out the whole consequence of her action. Here, there's a copy here for you. Of, but Tsar Gidl Bunim, the sin. So the idea here really is we've been out of our minds ever since the Garden of Eden. But doesn't mean anything because if a person still has... Some people have, you know, only nachas from their kids, Baruch Hashem. But if there was to be a situation where it's not 100% nachas, you have a little bit of tsar, so it could be from the Garden of Eden. But then again, we have to look at our own minds and we have to do the work ourselves. In other words, bottom line, you have to take responsibility, right? Don't blame it on the Garden of Eden because everybody's been out of their minds since then. Reminds me of the great, awesome parable of Rabbi Nachman, Okay. And it's a real short one, but it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Okay? And maybe I've done this, shared this with you before. The king pulls in his viceroy and he says to him, I see it in the stars that whoever eats the grain this year will go mad. Right? Will go crazy. It's not such an absurd thing, actually. Ergot, actually, is a rye fungus where LSD comes from. Right? So, actually, they say that's what happened in Salem. That's why he burned all those witches over there because they were running through the village without clothes on. It's because they had the fungus that was on this rye and they went crazy. Yeah. Some people would even so go so bold, not me. But then again, I am a renegade. That, that's, what, that, that's what happened in France with the whole... Uh, Mary Antoinette, let him eat cake. Stay with, stay away from the rye. Okay, <laughs> they'll go crazy. So in any case, it doesn't matter. French Revolution doesn't matter. Not important. The idea really is, it's not. He, he sees in the stars that whoever the king pulls in his vice, where he says, "I see in the stars whoever eats the grain this year will go mad." Okay. So his vice, where he says, "Okay, we got to put enough grain aside for you and me of the kosher grain, the non-tainted grain." that we'll be able to run the government while everybody goes, you know, and everybody, right? So do you know what the king said? Does anybody know the rest of the story? Have you ever heard this before? So the king says, no, 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 that won't work. Because if we stay sane and everybody else eats the grain and goes crazy, they're going to look at us and they're going to think well, we're crazy. And they're going to kill us. They'll storm the Bastille. <laughs> and they'll kill us because they say we're crazy. So then what are, you, what are we going to do? Uh huh. So we're going to eat the grain, except I'm going to mark my forehead here, and you're going to mark your forehead here. We're going to mark each other's foreheads that will remind each other that we ate the grain and we went crazy. So I'll be able to look at your forehead and say, okay, I'm crazy, I ate the grain, okay. And it'll somehow will bring us back to some kind of sanity, to some level. And you will look at my forehead, so we'll be able to remember that we both ate the tainted grain. Okay, so the tainted grain goes way back to the Garden of Eden. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's it's a very deep muscle. I mean, it could be discussed at at length for a long time, because what does it mean, right? But the, here, the idea really is is we're all kind of a little woo -woo, okay, because we all ate the grain. So the question is, how do we bring ourselves out of it with the marks on the forehead? Okay. Exactly. We gotta have that line every single class. You gotta say that. This is why you have David. Listen, David. It's David. Five minutes though. That's good. You went, you made it. He made. He made. That's his challenge right here. Okay, fine. Let's go. Go on. Okay, fine. So the idea really is we have level one, two, three of our of our souls. Nefesh, ruach, neshama. Those are extended to all of the different people that are in our immediate environment, whether they're servants or pets or physical possessions, that's your nefesh. If you have a problem, car trouble, reflection of your nefesh. You got to fix your deeds. Okay? Ruach problem. If you have a problem with your spouse or, or friends or enemies saying bad about you, so that's a reflection, of course, in your speech. You have to check your speech out. If you have problems with your kids, so that means you got to check your head out. Okay, that means you have your thoughts. You got to go ahead and, and, and realign your thoughts to be a higher level of thinking. Okay, 
So now here we're going on here on the page. In his book, Shar Gilgulim, which is the whole treatise on reincarnation, Rabbi Yitzhak Gloria presents the spiritual laws that govern the journey of souls as they incarnate through lifetimes and fragment into smaller units that may be simultaneously embodied by different people or creatures at one time. Okay? Just to go back a little bit of a backtrack. Okay? That we know that at Mount Sinai we had 600,000 men were there. Okay? And their wives. Okay? And so we do say in our tradition that in terms of a root souls, there are 600,000 root souls that every single one of us comes from. Okay? And so that means each one of those 600,000 breaks out, that's what he says here, fragments into smaller units. So now we have, let's say, 16 million Jews in the world today. So each one of those, all of those, goes zip up into one of those 600,000. 600,000 are bigger blocks, but they branch out like a tree into the 16 million that we have here. Okay? So that means, in a root sense, you, there's uh, many, many more people. I have to figure out the math, okay? I don't know if I could, could figure out the AC. I can't figure out the AC. It's on auto, auto echo, which means it's hot, okay? Because <laughs> we're so into the echo. Okay, forget it. Yeah, the fan might help. All right, it'll be it'll, it'll kick on in in in, in about three hours. Okay, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just felt that. That was good. Okay, fine. So, in other words, we have six hundred thousand root souls, and every single soul. If you go, someone who wants to do the math in terms of sixteen million, and go ahead and figure their calculator out, how many people are rooted in that are sixteen million today could be rooted into the six hundred thousand. In other words, how much for each? Okay, someone do the math, help us. There he goes, the math man, here he's on it. There's something that David can do. <laughs> okay, while well, he's figuring that out, that means, what? So 16 million Jews. I believe there are 16 million Jews in the world. A few years ago it was 15 million. I think it's like 0.3%. I don't care about what, how much of the population, we're 0.01 of the population of the world. But I just want to know, if there's 600,000 root souls, how much do you do divide 16 million yeah. by 600,000? What about the non-Jews? They're external. <laughs> they come from a different part of Adam. Okay? They're not they, part of the root soul. Yeah, so let's, let, you can get into, let's say, just like Adam has his body and he has a soul. Okay? So the soul is the 600,000. And then there's the body, which is all the nations mm -hmm. come from. Okay? And that didn't really didn't come about until uh, after the sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They say, basically, bottom line, uh, if you remember from Tanya, that they come from the Klippo. They come from the exter very externalized, uh, not even Noga. No. Jews come from Noga. Jews? We come from Noga. So Jews come from Noga. That's a mixture of good and evil. Non-Jews are all the other three klipo, the, the storm wind, the gray cloud, and the consuming fire. It means it's just more concealed. It's Understand? The good, the good in them is more concealed. It's 26. So each soul goes to 26 different people. 26? No. There's 26 for each root. Yeah, that's right. No, it can't be. That's too little. There's 600,000. There's only 26. Okay, good. I like that. Let's go. I like that a lot. 26. Let's stick with that number. Okay. <laughs> That means there's 26 dudes on this planet that are totally connected to your same root. Do, 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 do. And he could be in this room. Do, 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 do. Could be. <laughs> so 20, 26. Okay, that's pretty cool. Women, women are married to the men. Yeah, I would, I would think that also, well, if, if, if she gets married, okay? But I think part of the 16 million is also women because it's, a, they're, it's part of the 16 million. It's not only men. 16 million men, Jews, man, Jewish men. Getting a little worried here. No. <laughs> <laughs> it might be too long. Like no. Long. no, 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 no. Okay? <laughs> Listen, they're all, they be, they, when they get married, they're all part of the same root, aren't they? 
if they stay married. <laughs> then, oh, then who knows? Well, I'm not going to get into civil game right now. Okay, the reason why they counted at Mount Sinai 600,000 was because they were married and their ishto kagufa, we say, the, the wife is like your body. Okay, so they were considered to be at that time one root, the husband and wife. Okay? The idea really is like this. Look what she says here. Look what she says here. Okay, let's get this statement again. Rabbi Yitzhak Lurie presents the spiritual laws that govern the journey of souls as they incarnate through lifetimes and fragment into smaller units that may be simultaneously embodied by different people or creatures. I don't know why she added that. At one time. In other words, there's, there's, there's different roots of you, 26 divisions, somewhere on the planet. Okay? That's a, the fragment of the root soul. Okay? At one time. The oversoul, which is the, call it the gestalt of all its myriad manifestations, remains coherent through an interconnecting network of threads that join all of its parts and layers together as a single unit that spans both space and time. In other words, these root souls, which is the head, headquarters for us, okay? Right? Right? It, 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 it itself is completely connected to all of the other 600,000 root souls. Okay? Very simply, let's put it like this. Okay? <coughs> Even though it's not going to be so simple. Okay? Someone give me a... Ah, let's, so touche. Okay? I'm going to try to do it where the camera sees it. Of course, I'm looking for something to wipe. I'll just do the hand. Tissue. Right Rabbi, here, here, here. Instead of getting your hands dirty. Too late. <laughs> So let's say the way we look at it is like this. Really, this is how the Arizal looks at it. Okay? No shoulder there. Guy have a shoulder. Okay? So if you look at this, there's six body parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at it like that. All right? Six body parts. Right? So you figure each one of these body parts is 100,000 souls. Okay? This is the form of a primordial soul. This is how it's done. This is how it's done, just for practical purposes, so we can you know, get some kind of, of grasp. Okay? So let's say some people come from this place. Your, root, your soul, your, your, your root comes from here. Some people come from here, some here, some here, some here, some here, in a general way. Okay? We are all rooted part of this one universal soul. This is the universal soul that does break up into 600,000. And then, of course, it breaks down into 16 million. Here's a question. Though. Yeah. Is, aren't, we, aren't we talking about 600,000 men between the ages of 20 and 60? Yes, that and is correct. Do the other people don't have souls? The younger people? So, 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 so let's look at it like this. Since we've said that there's 600,000, you're asking a great question. The question was, what about the kids? Well, the kids are part of that person's soul. Don't forget, right? We already said that. It's in your neshama. How about the parents? So we're going to say the parents are also your, the same neshama. Neshama or chaya. Whatever it is, it's a part of the same root soul. It's just an ex another extension of that same root. These are the roots. All of those bef after 50, 60, right? 50 They're connected to the main are connected to the main 600,000. And the kids also connected. And the wives also connected to the main 600,000. These are the main. Everything branches out from there. So that, so that cannot include non-Jews because they wouldn't be part of the them. connection. They no, they weren't at Mount Sinai. Were unless they make it back. Unless they make it back. Yeah. Yeah. If they make it back, the, the language that they call a convert... Yeah. Is and the, the Talmud is ger shenis gayer. It's a very strange language. Convert that converted. Why don't you call it a non-Jew that converted? Why are you calling it a convert that converted? Once they convert, once they make it, that's a, a retroactive revelation that they were at Mount Sinai. It's a retroactive revelation that they were at Mount Sinai. So they count. Then they count. They're in. Okay? But if not... So then they're with the external fragments of this part. They're not, this is the soul part, not the body. Okay? 
Got it? So far? More or less? Speech, no. Thought, speech, and action are considered to be garments of the soul. The, that physical, that didn't come until he sinned in the Garden of Eden. Remember, in the class that we had in, in, in a ton, or here, I think it was, Adam was like an, was a thought body, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. not a real body. They call it astral body. And only after that, the sin of the Garden of Eden, he got congealed into the physical snake skin that we're in now. So in other words, that whole manifestation of Gentiles, what didn't even come about until that happened. Okay? In other words, if Adam never sinned, there would only be a planet of Jews. Delicatessens. All <laughs> from one end of the planet to the other. One deli and Chinese and deli. It's, <laughs> it's like, no, the judge, no such thing as that day, whatever would not be, it would just be Chinese or deli. Okay? The entire planet. Planet deli. Okay? Planet Schmulke Bernsteins. Okay? So, there would not have been... <laughs> you don't remember Schmulke Bernstein? No, I never heard of that person. Well, it was a place in somewhere in New York that we all, they all praised it. It closed down, it closed down. It, had, it was the best Chinese deli or ever, okay? It was like, unbelievable. Okay, anyways, I don't want to... I was just a Bernie Green grab. What? The Sturgeon King. I don't know what that is. Is that in New York? It's a deli. Okay, great. It probably took over. Okay. So you have these six that I just numbered here are called the Oversoul. It's a gestalt of all of the other 600,000. Okay? And, it, and you see how these, all of these, since they're part of one body, they're all interconnected. The Sulam itself says, really, there's only one soul. Because there's only one time that God breathed into Adam the the divine breath. There was only one. Sh- it was a one-shot deal. It wasn't like <laughs> the only thing that's separating, according to the Sulam, is our bodies. But then, of course, there's also the astral bodies. Okay, our form, our, our, the form that we take in our physical world, is going to kind of, kind of stay with us, stays with us in the afterlife. Okay. But the idea really is, let's just look at this here. Okay. The idea really is, she's going to say it here. Okay. It's kind of like. Um, this, this, of course, soul, as we know, everything in the soul world, in the soul world, there is no space and time. There is no space and time. In the spiritual realm, there is no space and time. Okay? So that means, really, all the souls that have always existed, right, are all in here. Okay? And we're all part of, and they're all simultaneously existing. Okay? The Hebrew term for reincarnation is Gilgul Neshama, or what she calls revolutions of the soul. Okay, we call it reincarnation. Rabbi Luria identifies several distinct forms of Gilgul, for each enables the soul to accomplish a different type of Tikkun. Tikkun means rectification. One very common option is called Ibur. Or impregnation. Has anybody ever heard of that before? I've never discussed it anymore. Ebor is so cool. Okay? And her wording is pretty cool too. Ebor is a type of a reincarnation. In this case, a soul from the inner planes, which has completed its specific task, attaches itself to a soul that is presently incarnate and supplies that living person with energy, insight, and guidance to accomplish more than would be possible without this added input of heavenly assistance. In other words, while the person is alive, us sitting here, we are called incarnated souls. Our souls are stuck in our bodies. It's very hard to get out. And sometimes there is a part of our, in our root factors, there are some souls that have existed, that lived, and they accomplished their task. Tzadiki, righteous people, righteous souls, can actually come into your mind while you are alive and give you, as she says it, energy, insight, and guidance. You can have what's called an ebor, a impregnated. Actually, you can have three, according to the RE. Three can be there at once. Can you imagine that? 
I can, no, it reminds me of that scene in the Holy Grail where those three knights, the three-headed knights were arguing, should we kill him first and then have tea for crumpets? No, we should have tea for crumpets and then kill them, right? And they're arguing with each other. No, that doesn't happen here. Sorry, that's backtrack for me. Three can be in one person. Yeah, right there, I go, I'm crazy. Only because of you, okay. <laughs> He's laughing now because he remembers the scene. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, now you guys got to go rent it after here, okay? Just Okay, anyways, yeah, it's a long one. It's a long time ago. Anyways, but the problem is here. A person can have inside their soul an attachment to a higher soul that comes to guide and give energy to that person. They also benefit because it gives them extra mitzvahs. In other words, they push you to do mitzvahs. I would call it on the dark side of it would be called a possession. But we don't talk about that because that's is talking about a completely different issue. This is like kind of like a positive influence. <laughs> a soul that has piggybacked onto your soul and gives thoughts and ideas and direction how to go ahead and do stuff and to accomplish your mission. Yes? Like gives you an insight on how to handle a situation that's puzzling you at work. Like looking at somebody that is, they're just immature and they're not going to be able to... At various many times, yes. But the problem is, I'm going to cut to the chase here. If the person messes up their actions, they do something like less than to the liking of this higher soul that happens to be piggybacking on, it leaves. It goes, I'm out of here, dude. You, you suck. <laughs> you stink. You stink. I'm out of here. I think that, generally speaking, they only come for specific tasks. They could, but they can hang around. They don't have to just... Okay, they can hang, and they can hang, and they can hang for a long time because they can push you to do certain mitzvahs and they can keep pushing. And then they also accrue uh, more light for themselves as they, uh, because they are helping you to go ahead and fix yourself and fix the world. Feed off each other. It's kind of like, I don't like the word feeding, but it's more like bringing more light. Right. Okay. okay? How, many how, many mistake, how many screw up mistakes do you, do you get to make before that, that it could be one work. screw up, man. It could be one. Could be it could one, be one, one could be ugly one. deed, God forbid. Oh, okay. One ugly deed, and like, nah, because it's gonna get no, nah, no, nah. yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. It doesn't. It, it, no, it's like beneath its dignity to get involved in that. It's like you want to go into the into the mm-hmm. to the garbage mm-hmm. and start crawling around the garbage. No, you're not schlepping me in there. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Because some part of the discarnate soul actually enters the incarnate soul, and it is called an ebor. Okay, ebor means impregnation. Okay, so it's for a positive. So you can have three voices in your head, but they're but in this case they're not going to be arguing with each other first to have tea and crumpets and then kill him. But this is not considered a divic. No, divics are in the That's negative side. Right, the okay. Thank you for that Hebrew word. I said I said possession, but dibuk is the is the proper. So this is like the total positive. These are holy beings of light. Now a person can be misled. It, it does happen. There's true stories, many true stories where a person who's a Talmud Chacham, he's a scholar, he's and then all of a sudden this angelic form comes to him, and it's stories recorded like this, true stories, where all of a sudden I'm here to teach you. I'm going to teach you all the mysteries of the universe and the beautiful things. And he's sitting down with them, and it's great, and it's awesome. And then what happens is, all of a sudden, the guy says, you, you really have to do this deed now. And he tries to convince the person to do some ugly deed. Right? And, and, no. Is it, is it going? I don't know if it's going. Okay, I don't know. Any case, um, so... They, they, they finally, the guy, he's like bewildered by, by this advice that this, this, this angel, this guy is giving to him to sin, to do a grievous sin, a disgusting sin. He goes to his wife, he says, he told me to do this. I go ask my father. The father says, no, this guy's from the dark side. Yeah, and you got to, and how do you find out? You got to ask him this certain question. If he answers it, then, then it's fine. It, then if he die, can't answer it, then you, you got to separate from him for good, Right? So it can happen that a person, you don't know, that's why we're not allowed to do seances, right? Because you don't know who you're talking to. 
So that would be an example, what you just gave, of a negative influence. Yeah, the but then again, it seems true. like it's really positive. But you have to ask. Yes, and you have to have ways of finding out. And there are ways of finding there out. There are ways. There are ways, okay? Rabbi, let's just do a little bit more. Rabbi, Rabbi Luria explains that Ebor also regularly, regularly occurs between individuals or creatures that are alive at the same time. This is astounding. In other words, you, there could be some unbelievable, heavenly, heavy-duty scholar, righteous guy, on the other side of the planet, and that somehow you both are connected to the same line, right? Same root soul, right? Let's say you came from the torso. He also comes from planet Torso. So therefore, there could be a connection, okay? He can, and he can be alive. We are all carrying, now this is a big line that I always teach, we're all carrying slivers of each other's soul in a general way. In each and every one of our souls is a sliver of everybody's soul. Living or dead, don't forget, in the spiritual realm, there is no time and there is no space. So therefore, right now, you have a Moshe Rabbeinu inside of you. You have Rabbi Nachman. And you have even the soul of the Mashiach himself. Is with, is hit That sliver is within every single one of us. Yeah, you have a sliver of the Mashiach. And you can connect to it so easily, as, as easily as you go to connect to a website. How do you do it? With your mind. What do you mean? Your mind can do anything. You say... Yeah, because really, the Baal Shem Tov says that sliver of soul to connect that Mashiach part of the element of our soul is your lifetime's work, is to, is to elevate that and make it grow great and to accentuate it, fix it, fix it, okay? So you can connect to it real easily, just ask, just ask, you just ask, just, <laughs> he's right there. You got the negative cards. You got those two. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Get away right from that. You got one Casey in you. You've got all these other. People. When higher, when higher reality shattered after eating from the tree of knowledge, right? All that higher reality that meant on the mental plane, our souls became entangled in this way. In other words, it wasn't like that before. It was just one universal soul. But once after the shattering occurred, once after the eating from the tree of knowledge. So then it branched out into this network. Okay? See, before Adam, there was just one united soul. Right? It was very easy to get one thought. Your hand, if you go like this, right? It moves, right? Because the brain is completely telling it to move, right? My, my hand is telling me to do this, right? Instant communication. It's not working like that now. Okay? There's got to be... <laughs> Some, and the connection's broken. What? What was that? I didn't hear that. What was that? Like, the, I'm, on the, I'm on the finger, I'm the pinky. I'm going, what? Huh? Right? On one hand, the Ebor relationship is symmetrical because they're part of the same root. On the other hand, there is a hierarchy of influence, very important. When two people or creatures both currently alive are connected by Ebor, it is generally true that each contains a piece of the other's soul. And yet, the most spiritually evolved of these partners exerts more influence on its soul buddy than is true in the other direction. In other words, their influence could go one way. Somebody who's more evolved, who fixed himself more, he can have an influence on the other people. This is also one thing that occurs to me all the time, and maybe, maybe I don't know, but, you know, a lot of times, a lot of these tzaddikim would come to people in dreams. And they'd influence them. I've had visitations with tzaddikim have come and talked to me in dreams. Okay? So, the, because why? They're in the root of my connection. So, they can go ahead and they impart influence and tell me things. Okay? So, they do impart influence. And even if you're not, not necessarily in your dream, you, it, it happens. If we pay attention... Most people would call it like intuition, but sometimes it's not. I sh God, I shouldn't have gone down that road. <laughs> yeah, I knew not to do what I had thought. Yeah. Okay, just a little bit more. This network of soul connections is dynamic and shifting. Some links are only temporary, like I told you. As soon as the transfer of light occurs, the bond dissolves and the souls part. Other links are more enduring, even permanent. 
and there is a constant exchange of influence across their circuits, though usually one party is more dominant in this regard. People connected in this way may never meet or they may never be intimately related. In other words, some guy in China, you're getting messages. Well, I can't decipher it as Wong Jing Hang Hong Hang Jing Hang. No, it's just kidding. Usually it's like quite discernible, okay? But then again, the idea really is that you have to, a person has to at least start to contemplate of where do thoughts come from? All of a sudden, thoughts in your mind, where do they come from, right? There's only a few organs in our body that are constantly working, right? The brain constantly, it's constantly going, right? Also the heart, the lungs, right? So, you know, they're constantly going, even when we sleep, right? Everyone is a hub that extends and receives influence in many directions. People are generally more aware of the light they send than what they receive, though both may be inside their visual field, outside their visual field. In other words, we are giving all the time. We give, impart influence all the time to the people around us. But sometimes the people where the receiving of the light we don't always get. The image of a nerve net with its filaments entwined is a perfect metaphor to describe this complex network of spiritual influence. Each cell is touched by the tentacles of other cells that may be very distant but are specifically directed to it and not to its neighbor. An axon, I think those are nerves, those are nerves, axons and dendrites, I believe, those were the, the brain, winds its way through the tangle of neural tissue until it finds its target, the cell that must receive its message, for they, are, for they share a common mission. This precisely parallels the interconnecting network of soul threads that spans continents, leaking creatures according to their common root souls, okay? So we're going to stop here, okay? And uh, we'll continue Emir Sashem next time, okay? But the idea really is, if you look at the picture here, we see the picture here? So it, like, it has this whole thing, and usually love, sometimes we'll always borrow terminology, and we'll always borrow things that we see in the world. We say, Mibsari echze elokai, from my flesh I see God. So that means when we look at these things, we can help us to actually have some kind of grasp for things that are in the spiritual realm. It's a bizarre concept, the fact that we're all interconnected. If we'd only all get it, you know, right? Because there's so much more to go and so much more to work with this concept about our inter interconnectedness, okay? But for, uh, for right now, just know the universe is not what it seemed to be, okay? <laughs>